The Walmart Bass Fishing League is the grassroots opportunity for anglers everywhere. Today, we honor the best in one of fishing's greatest traditions, the BFL All-American. The Weekend Anglers National Championship awards $100,000 and the title of All-American Champion starting right now on FLW Outdoors. Welcome to Shreveport, Louisiana. This is the live weigh-in of the BFL All-American. I'm Carlton Wing. I'm Taylor Carr. And I'm Charlie Evans here in Shreveport, Louisiana, here on Cross Lake. Thanks to Shreveport Sports Authority. We're proud to be here. I tell you what, our 10 anglers are just now taking their boats. These are our finalists. One of them will hoist a $100,000 check for first place. Let's talk about how these anglers got to where they are in this very prestigious event. Over 30,000 anglers wanted to be in these teams it's right here. Those are the ones that tried all year long in qualifying events. 22 divisions spread nationwide, fished five events, only the top 30 from each division, advanced on to regional competition, and then only the very cream of the crop to the All-American. 50 boaters, 50 co-anglers, and now we're down to the best 10. See who's going to walk away the $100,000 winner. Charlie, so you know, these 10 truly qualified to be where they are on stage today. Charlie, tell us what it means to these anglers to make the All-American. i got to tell you, this is the highlight of their life for many of these anglers. This, I mean, when you're 10 out of 30,000 entries, I mean, that is some bragging rights, and these are truly are the best of the best. They had some beautiful weather conditions. They had to deal a little bit with the slot limit. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show. Has the fishing been tough this week, Charlie? The fishing has been super tough, but again, the cream always comes to the top. <laughs> this is the test of the toughest. All right, there's a a lot of honor and prestige and a lot of money at stake. Of course, these co-anglers, or these anglers rather, fishing for $100,000, but the co-anglers fished yesterday for $50,000. A champion was named. Now, the co-anglers fish from the back of the boat. It's a little bit of a different deal, but they claim a big check as well. Here's a look back at how the co-anglers ended up yesterday. It doesn't matter which end of the boat you fish from. There's something very special about standing for the national anthem at the All-American. It means you're one of the nation's best weekend anglers. And for most, like Rookie of the Year Wesley Helton... Oh, it means chance of a lifetime. Helton and 49 other co-anglers took to Cross Lake in pursuit of a $50,000 first prize. They'd have to earn it, fishing a very stingy lake, and as we learned at day one's weigh-in, behind anglers who don't make many mistakes. It takes a lot of talent to be able to fish behind somebody and then to adapt every single time to somebody different. It does. It takes it takes a lot of luck. The boater has to uh, miss miss some fish, and the, the caliber of fishermen have qualified for this. They, they don't miss too many fish. 24 of the 50 co-anglers came to the stage empty-handed, including Missouri's David White, who may have spoken for a few others when he described his day to Charlie Evans. Oh, I got all kinds of bites. I don't know what I was doing wrong. I, oh, there's one under dock. He just pulled, kept pulling and pulling. I, I don't know. I just, I think I'm just so nervous because it's such a big tournament. Gordon George's Gary Fowler had better luck on day one. He caught his big fish, only one. But at 4-4, it was the day's big bass and good enough for second place. Trailing only North Carolina's Jeremy Ives. First thing Friday morning, we found Ives and reminded him how profitable his day might be. Are you ready to fish for $50,000? Yes, sir, I am. Sure am. But before Ives could say cha-ching, he'd have to stay ahead of challengers like Fowler, who was less than two pounds back. Fishing boat docks with angler Mike Brower, Fowler missed on several strikes, ending up with only one small fish. Hours later on the weigh-in stage, it was obvious many co-anglers had struggled. Nobody near the lead came close to matching his day one weight, so Ives still had a chance. He'd have to beat Bruce O'Brien to take the lead back. If this fish weighs over a pound, this fish weighs... One pound, eight ounces, we have a new leader. Jeremy Ives was back in front for good. Nobody else came within a pound. And when Jared Hembry fell short, Ives was the champion and $50,000 richer. How much today did you think of $50,000? All day long. Uh, and, I, and I came in way in, only had one. I was like, well, I think it's about to slip away from me, but it held on and I'm glad. Ives plans to fish ever starts next year and make a move to the front of the boat, too. Up next from Shreveport, the 10 angler finalists battle for the $100,000 grand prize and the coveted BFL All-American Championship. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Walmart. Always low prices, always. By Alpo. A great dog deserves a long life. A great dog deserves Alpo. And by Everstart Batteries. More power for your money. 
Welcome back to Shreveport, Louisiana. This is the live weigh-in of the BFL All-American, and this tournament has prestige behind it. These anglers have qualified to be here. $100,000 awaits our winner today. Now, one of the things that our anglers have had to deal with is this slot limit. Let's explain a little bit about what the slot limit is and how it has affected the fishing here this week at Cross Lake. Well, Fish and Wildlife here, in order to protect the resource at Cross Lake, have established slot limit between 14 and 17 inches. That's the most productive fish out there in the lake, the one that produces the most, and those are protected. So if you catch one between 14 and 17 inches, you must release it immediately. So our minimum tournament limit is 12, so you can catch them between 12 and 14, and then 17 and over. And of course, that is where the big bucks are. And of course, the Louisiana Fish and Wildlife and Fisheries Commission has set that limit to help preserve our waterways here as well. When these anglers, what does, must it feel like when the anglers have to turn away potentially a two or three pounder that could make a difference in this tournament? We've talked to them over the last two days, Carlton. I'll tell you, that is a true high and low. When you get that hit, fighting that fish, of course, if it's a big fish, 16 and a half, 16 three quarters, all of 17, you don't know that while he's out there in the water. So you're really excited to get him in the boat, put him on the board, and then just boom, all the way to the bottom, you know. <laughs> your heart drops out, you gotta chunk that one back in. It's really tough emotionally, but it's true test of the best. These guys are true survivors. I tell you what, and these anglers had to face what we call the slot monster, and we'll talk a little bit about the slot monster and see if it bit anybody a little bit later on as well. Let's take a look at the first two days of competition and see how these 50 anglers got to where they are and how we weeded down from 50 to 10 Here's a look at day one and day two. The goal for today is to, to fish tomorrow. This is your opportunity to fish the big leagues. Oh, it means a chance of a lifetime. I'm happy. I'm here. That's what counts. Here's a couple. Oh, whoa, 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 Here's you a picture, Lisa. The big fish do exist at Cross Lake, but in a bass tournament, this 35-pound catfish is only good for the post-tournament meal. I don't think Charlie will let me weigh that in. This monster of a fish wasn't the only beast these anglers faced this week. And uh, everything I caught today was in a slot. The old slot monster got me today, so. The slot monster is any fish between 14 and 17 inches. According to the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Commission, those must be immediately released, causing some anglers painful separation. It's tough, though, with three-pound fish, keep a little one. <laughs> the fishing proved more challenging than expected, but the leaders found enough on either side of the slot limit to move on to the finals. 14 pounds, two ounces, a tournament leader. Ohio's Dick Schaefer relied on a pair of four-pounders to take a lead he'd not relinquish. Mississippi's Ricky Smith finished third at last year's All-American. He got off to a great start with over eight pounds on day one. You know, I want to see how the weights finish up today, uh, and then I will determine, that'll determine what my tomorrow looks like as far as uh, how much fish I try to catch. But uh, yeah, there's, there's two places that I have that I would like to say for Saturday, if I'm lucky enough to be there. Smith was in fifth position after the first day. His day two plan included thoughts of day three. I, I'm not going to hit my primary places too hard. Uh, if I can pull in there and catch one or two fish early, I may, you know, I actually may go practicing uh, if I'm lucky enough to get a couple early. So that's kind of the game plan at this point. We'll see how that pans out. <laughs> It panned out well for Smith, who entered the finals with the second best total weight. The greatest comeback of day two came from Alabama's Terry Tucker, who turned in an aggressive catch of seven pounds, 13 ounces to keep his championship dreams alive. Other highlights included the brothers Bennett, 19-year-old RJ and 17-year-old Michael, who gave up one memory for another. Today's a special day back in California. Yeah, it's my high school graduation. Your what? High school graduate. Your class is graduating today. Yes, and I'm not there. Remember that 35-pound catfish? There was another big catch that didn't count on day two. I caught something I guarantee you nobody else caught here today. I caught a bullfrog that would have went over 17 inches. A 17-inch bullfrog, but it bit pretty good. It, was, it actually bit twice. Bit twice out there. Bullfrog man, congratulations. All right, have a check for him. All right, that's a look at how day one and two ended. We have our 10 finalists here right now. Let's meet our anglers now. We call it the anglers who made the Poland cut. Here they are. Yeah. 
Our first angler finished ninth at last year's EverStart Championship. He qualified for this year's All-American after his first BFL season. After day one, he was in 30th place, but a solid day two secured a berth in today's final. From Erie, Pennsylvania, Dave Lefebvre. Our next angler is one of two finalists from the Northeast Division. He caught two fish for nearly four pounds to secure a slot in this, his first All-American. He fished the BFL since 1996 from Lafayette, New York, Matt Martin. Our next angler is in his seventh year in the BFL, fishing from the Arkey Division. He qualified for this year's All-American with a sixth-place finish at the Chevy Wild Card Tournament. From Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Eddie Waits the third. Our next angler stood in third place after day one. His nine-pound, four-ounce limit was strong enough to keep him in the final field, even after turning it a zero on day two. He is a six-year BFL veteran from Kannapolis, North Carolina, Maurice Freeze. Our next angler is competing in his first All-American. He stood comfortably in fourth place after day one and survived a tough day two to earn a slot in today's final. He's a four-year veteran of the BFL from Bourbon, Missouri, Jay Hulsey. Our next angler is a five-time BFL champion and has been the most consistent of our finalists. His two limits were within two ounces of each other. He's currently competing in his rookie season on the FLW Tour in his second All-American from Auburn, Alabama, Steve Kennedy. Our next angler had the best catch of day two. Seven pounds, 13 ounces, secured a slot in his second All-American top 10, having finished eighth last year. He finished in the season top 10 four times in both the Bama and the Choo Choo Division from Gadsden, Alabama, Terry Tucker. In just his second season in the BFL, our next angler is already near the top of the field. He finished third in the Western Division and in the Western Regional. His 12-pound catch on day one was second best from Red Bluff, California, Greg Gutierrez. Our next angler finished third at the 2000 All-American. He's a BFL veteran, having fished 44 tournaments since 96. He owns five top 10 finishes in the Mississippi Division season standings and on the second best total weight this week from Collinsville, Mississippi, Ricky Smith. Our final angler is competing in his first All-American. He's a three-time BFL tournament champion from the Buckeye Division. His two-day total was the best of the field by over three and a half pounds from Salina, Ohio, Dick Schaefer. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are, your 10 finalists for the BFL All-American. All right, we have some anglers with some nerves. We also have some family members with some as well. Taylor Carr is with one of them right now. Taylor? Oh, Carlton, a whole family. Emily, Shannon, and Wilma Smith from Meridian, Mississippi, daughters and wife of, uh, of Ricky Smith. Shannon, first of all, what would it mean to your dad to win this event? Well, it's, it's been tough out there this week, and um, it's been a challenge to bring fish in every day. And um, for my dad to overcome that challenge, um, he would take such pride and be so honored to be named the All-American Champion. But I even if it doesn't, I I'm still proud because he's my dad. Now, Emily, you got some good news actually just yesterday while he was fishing. What happened? That's right. He had to share the spotlight with me yesterday. I recently graduated from occupational therapy school and got offered a position um, as a therapist at the University of Mississippi Medical Center and accepted. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. We're excited. It might be a great weekend for the Smith family. Somebody's dream is about to come true. When we come back to Shreveport, we'll find out who. Welcome back to Shreveport, Louisiana. This is the live weigh-in of the BFL All-American. It's a national championship for the weekend angler and truly a special event. And we are just moments away from beginning the weigh-in. Let's first set the stage and explain how this weigh-in works, at least in comparison with how we do it on the FLW Tour. In order to get into our 100,000... The Walmart Bass Fishing League is the grassroots opportunity for anglers everywhere. Today, we honor the best in one of fishing's greatest traditions, the BFL All-American. The Weekend Anglers National Championship awards $100,000 and the title of All-American Champion starting right now on FLW Outdoors. Hello, America, and welcome to Shreveport, Louisiana. This is the live weigh-in of the BFL All-American. I'm Carlton Wing. I'm Taylor Carr. And I'm Charlie Evans.
us here in Shreveport, Louisiana, here on Cross Lake. Thanks to Shreveport Sports Authority. We're proud to be here. I tell you what, our 10 anglers are just now taking their boats. These are our finalists. One of them will hoist a $100,000 check for first place. Let's talk about how these anglers got to where they are in this very prestigious event. Over 30,000 anglers wanted to be in these teams right here. Those are the ones that tried all year long in qualifying events. 22 divisions spread nationwide. Fish five events. Only the top 30th Beach Division advanced on to regional competition and then only the very cream of the crop to the All-American. 50 boaters, 50 co-anglers, and now we're down to the best 10. See who's going to walk away the $100,000 winner. Charlie, so you know these 10 truly qualified to be where they are on stage today. Charlie, tell us what it means to these anglers to make the All-American. i got to tell you, this is the highlight of their life for many of these anglers. This, I mean, when you're 10 out of 30,000 entries, I mean, that is some bragging rights, and these are truly are the best of the best. They had some beautiful weather conditions. They had to deal a little bit with the slot limit. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show. Has the fishing been tough this week, Charlie? The fishing has been super tough, but again, the cream always comes to the top. <laughs> this is the test of the toughest. All right, there's a a lot of honor and prestige and a lot of money at stake. Of course, these co-anglers, or these anglers rather, fishing for $100,000, but the co-anglers fished yesterday for $50,000. A champion was named. Now, the co-anglers fish from the back of the boat. It's a little bit of a different deal, but they claim a big check as well. Here's a look back at how the co-anglers ended up yesterday. It doesn't matter which end of the boat you fish from. There's something very special about standing for the national anthem at the All-American. It means you're one of the nation's best weekend anglers. And for most, like Rookie of the Year Wesley Helton, Oh, it means chance of a lifetime. Helton and 49 other co-anglers took to Cross Lake in pursuit of a $50,000 first prize. They'd have to earn it, fishing a very stingy lake, and as we learned at day one's weigh-in, behind anglers don't make many mistakes. It takes a lot of talent to be able to fish behind somebody and then to adapt every single time to somebody different. It does. It takes it takes a lot of luck. The boater has to um, miss miss some fish, and the caliber of fishermen have qualified for this. They, they don't miss too many fish. 24 of the 50 co-anglers came to the stage empty-handed, including Missouri's David White, who may have spoken for a few others when he described his day to Charlie Evans. Oh, I got all kinds of bites. I don't know what I was doing wrong. I, oh, there's one under a dock. He just pulled. He kept pulling and pulling. I, I don't know. I just, I think I'm just so nervous because it's such a big tournament. Gordon George's Gary Fowler had better luck on day one. He caught his big fish, only one, but at 4-4, it was the day's big bass and good enough for second place, trailing only North Carolina's Jeremy Ives. First thing Friday morning, we found Ives and reminded him how profitable his day might be. Are you ready to fish for $50,000? Yes, sir, I am. Sure am. But before Ives could say cha-ching, he'd have to stay ahead of challengers like Fowler, who was less than two pounds back. Fishing boat docks with angler Mike Brower, Fowler missed on several strikes, ending up with only one small fish. Hours later on the weigh-in stage, it was obvious many co-anglers had struggled. Nobody near the lead came close to matching his day one way. Last couple days, and I needed a southwest wind to push them fish back in that weed bed. Just didn't work for you today, but obviously you've had a great tournament here in Shreveport. Oh yeah, this is a, a class act. I mean. Uh, I don't know what to say. It's uh, I'll be back next year. We certainly hope he will. Jay Hall's a ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations, Jay. Move him to the front of the boat. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've gone halfway through our field. One angler has weighed out. Nine still remain. Steve Kennedy is on deck. He'll be our first angler to weigh in when we come back right after this. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Fuji. Fuji Film. Do you speak Fuji? Buy Garmin. Get a Garmin and get on fish. And buy Pepsi. The joy of Pepsi. Welcome back to the live way into the BFL All-American. One of our finalists will win $100,000, and let's get a little bit closer to finding out who that champion may be. Our next angler is Steve Kennedy. Steve will need to bring up at least three pounds and nine ounces to take the lead. Five fish limit here. There's fish number one. He's under the slot of 14, between 12 and 14. There's number two, another one in the 12 to 14 inch range. 
Need one more, at least. There is number three. We're looking for three pounds, nine ounces. We're gonna need number four. Reach it again for number four. And there is number four. Steve Kennedy, four fish. This will do it all alive. The weight here, a new leader, four pounds even, four even. All right, thank you, Steve. All right, our next angler now is Terry Tucker. Terry will need to bring up four pounds. Four pounds worth of fish to take his turn on top of the leaderboard and stay in our game. There's one small keeper for Terry. And again, he needs four pounds. That's a better fish there. Two good fish there. Let's check the weight. He's got to get to four pounds. And he does. Four pounds, two ounces. He's our new leader, 4-2. All right, so Terry has now taken his turn on top of the leaderboard. Next up, Greg Gutierrez from Red Bluff, California. Our mark, four pounds, two ounces now. That's what Greg will be reaching for. Greg has smiled all week long ever since he got here to Shreveport, Louisiana. Been having a great time catching some good fish. In these four pounds and two ounces to jump into the lead, 4-2. There is fish number one. Pull out again. Got to get to four pounds, two ounces at 1-7. That's a good fish. Two good fish there. Again, we're looking for four pounds, two ounces. These two fish weigh, and they are alive. Four pounds, nine ounces, the new leader, four nine. Okay, Greg has now taken his turn up top. We've gone through eight of our anglers. Next up, here comes Ricky Smith from Collinsville, Mississippi. Our mark to beat, four pounds, nine ounces. 4-9. Ricky Smith in his second consecutive All-American. Made the final cut last year and again this year. Looking for four pounds, nine ounces. Here is fish number three coming out. We'll check these three here. We're going to need one more. Here is fish number four. And let's see if that does it. Looking for four pounds and nine ounces. In that Ranger Live well, they'll stay alive forever. He does it. Four fish, four pounds, 12 ounces, 412, a new leader. All right. Okay, uh, we complete round number one here with Dick Schaefer, our leader after day one, our leader after day two. We'll need four pounds and 13 ounces. There is fish number one, and he's reaching for fish number two. There is fish number two. And that's it, two fish in the bag, two pounds, one ounce. Dick, not a great day for you. No, not really. Uh, started out good. I caught two fish real quick this morning on a crankbait. And then I broke the crankbait, and that's the only one I had. Well, we got video of you out there. Let's see if you're with that crankbait out there this morning out here on Cross Lake. Let's watch Dick Schaefer out there at work. What are you doing? Uh, just cranking a little point. What? That weigh 10 pounds, 15 ounces, a new leader, 10, 15. All right. Okay, we've gone through nine anglers. Let's bring up Andy Morgan now. Andy coming up now. The, the bar has risen quite a bit uh, since we began here. We Looking need to pull 11, 11 pounds. pounds. 11 pounds out of the Cohen boat. Andy is specialist in the flipping technique, and this has been a flipping tournament for sure. A lot of fish caught with that technique in this event. Going to Hickory, he's reaching for number four now. And we're going to need his limit fish. Let's we'll see if he's got enough. He's got to get to 11 pounds. He has the limit of five. These five fish weigh at nine pounds, eight ounces, not quite enough for Andy Morgan. Uh, caught a bunch of good fish today. I caught like maybe 10 keepers, but I never had a good bite. Uh, Cold through several fish. Had one little spot there that I had a limit at 6:30, and just couldn't uh, couldn't help myself the rest of the day. Limit at 6:30. Let's see how you caught those out there on Old Hickory. We got video of Andy Morgan out there on the lake today. What are you doing, Andy? Going to spinnerbait. Spinnerbait. I thought you'd be flipping out there. Well, I found a little patch of grass that they were loaded up in pretty good, but just a lot of small fish. And again, that spinnerbait. What spinnerbait were you using? A Stanley spinnerbait. And what color? 
Uh, white and chartreuse. And what weight? Half. Run it pretty fast? Mm, about medium. About medium over top the grass, they just come out there and explode on it. Yeah, they were chasing shad up and down this little grass line. It's just about 100 yards long, and they were chasing shad up and down the grass line. You could hammer them pretty good. Had some big fish in there earlier in the week. Uh, I caught the big fish actually up the river flipping earlier in the week, and I kind of moved down the river as it kept getting slower and slower up there with the cloud cover and stuff. I didn't think I could go up there and catch them today. He caught a limit today, but not enough to give a great round of applause for Andy Morgan. All right. Congratulations. Okay, we've completed our first round. We've gone around the horn once. Each of our 10 anglers have had an opportunity to bring up fish. Now let's start round number two. Here comes Frank Ippoliti. Frank weighed in one fish. He got this all started with one pound and 11 ounces. Now we need nine pounds and five ounces to retake the lead. He's fishing out of the Snickers boat today. Of course, our event here presented by Snickers on Old Hickory. Frank got the fish out of the Snickers boat. He's weighed in one. There's two, three. There's fish number four for him, three right here. Again, he's, they are definitely alive. He needs nine. That may do it there. Let's see. That will make his limit. He needs nine pounds, four ounces to move into the lead. And he has four fish here that weigh eight pounds, 15 ounces. Not quite enough, Frank. Well, it was close, Charlie, but... Uh I had a pretty good week. I only had about six hours of practice for this tournament, so I feel pretty good with what I accomplished. But uh, overall, I had the big bite that I needed today to put me in contention, and I lost it, and that's just the way it goes. But I fished pretty good, so I'm happy. We've got video of you out there on the water. I hope it's not the one you lost. Let's check the monitor and see Frank at work out there. What are you doing here? I'm flipping a jig, Charlie. What color jig? Black and blue. Always around rocks? Oh, always around rocks. Oh, that's not the one you lost there, no, definitely. No, it's not the one I lost. It was a pretty good fish. I, I guesstimated around five pounds or better. And I've had a, a bite like that every day. And it was pretty much in the same place. I caught two out of the three big ones that I weighed in all week in the same place. And that, that's the way it goes. I wasn't quite 100%, but I'm, I'm satisfied. You are satisfied. Again, with only six hours of practice, you really got on the quick. Well, I had two patterns going. I caught some fish the first day. I caught a limit early the first day of the tournament in grass. Then with, with the conditions changing, the water started back. I don't, and I'm not sure if they just stopped running water. My grass fish just died. So I ran and started flipping bluffs, and lo and behold, I came to a bluff that was loaded with fish. So You did a great job out there, Frank. Let's give him a great round of applause. Good job, Frank. Frank and the Snickers boat. Okay, that's four down. We have six remaining. Let's bring up Pat Fisher. Pat brought up one fish in the first round. It was two pounds and one ounce. Now we're looking for eight pounds and 15 ounces to retake the lead. He's weighed in one so far. The limit again is five. That's a nice beginning. Pat fishing Energizer boat today. And eight pounds, 15 ounces. <laughs> two Good points. catch. Yeah. <laughs> it won't take long with fish like that. There is fish number three. Let's check their weight here. Let's stop right there, Pat. Again, we're looking for 815. We're going to need his limit fish. All right, this will be his fifth fish, and there it is. A five fish limit. Five fish limit for Pat Fisher, and we will. About two anchors from now, back to you. Okay, well, let's continue on now. Well, let's begin with round number two. We'll get back over to Dave Lefebvre. He weighed in one fish to get us all started with 14 ounces. He is now three pounds and 14 ounces behind, so that's what we'll need from you to keep going. There is his second keeper, one fish there. He's reaching again, reaching again. Nope, oh, that's it. Oh. One fish that weighs one pound. That's all for Dave. Again, not enough today, Dave. No, Charlie, I'll tell you what, though. This, this week has been unbelievable. I mean, I, I know a few guys that's been here before. This is my first year fishing. And uh, they, they kind of filled me in on how it was going to be and what the crowd, you know, how the FLW Outdoor staff would treat us and all that. But I'll tell you what, they didn't even come close to what it was. It was actually just unbelievable. I'm glad. My, Um, I'm just, I'm real happy that my mother, my mom's here, she came and, cause I, you know, I got to explain how this was to all my friends and luckily she got to see how it is so she can help me out, you know. <laughs> Not only that, they'll be able to watch it on television, we're going to watch you fishing out there on Cross Lake right now. Where you at? 
Oh, I'm right there. Well, that that was just, <laughs> I've been fit. Yeah, I'm right there. I was actually on a grass type pattern and uh, that was when I stopped catching fish, actually. Uh, I, 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 it wasn't working. And that was when I went to some rocks. And uh, I got a bite right away. And I thought, wow, this is different, because I hadn't had a bite on rocks. So I just started fishing some rocks. And, th and uh, that was actually my first fish. And that changed what I did the rest of the day. But it didn't work out. Just didn't work. Again, something happened there with the grass fish. They just, you diminished them, or they moved, or conditions changed? Uh, I, I know I didn't diminish them, because I saved some stuff for today. But I, I caught a, you know, I caught a lot of fish yesterday, and uh, I had a limit yesterday. And I, I'm not sure what happened. We had sun today. I, I was flipping a big jig in, into the grass back under there, and they should have been in there today. And I was real excited about it, but uh, for some reason, they're not there. I mean, my hat's off to these guys who figured figured out what to do today because it was as tough as it gets. You have to adapt every single day in competitive angling. Things change just constantly. Yeah, they change constantly. And today, you know, um, I thank my co-angler partner for the first day. He, he started throwing a spinnerbait behind me flipping, and he caught three the first day, and I only caught one. And he kind of turned me on to that spinnerbait thing, and I did that the second day, and it helped me out. And today, I thought was a perfect day for spinnerbaits. We had a little bit of cloud cover, and... Uh, it, it just seemed like a perfect day. I knew people were going to catch them today, but for me, it just didn't happen. I fished the same same areas with that spinnerbait, and they would not bite it. I tell you, you did a great job, though. Not only have you had fun at the All-American, we've had fun having you, All-American. We'll help you make it back. Give them a good round of applause. Thank you, Dave. Dave LaFever. All right, now we go to Matt Martin. Matt has weighed in one fish. It was a good one at 2,011 ounces, and I can tell by the way he's walking up here empty-handed. That's it for Matt. Oh, my, only one, one fish is all you had today, but it was a good fish. It was. Unfortunately, uh, the slot monster really got me today. Uh, it, it took two, maybe three fish away from me, and uh, it really hurt. I, I Maybe we have some of that on video here. Look here on Cross Lake. You out there, Matt, fishing, is this one of your good ones or one of your slot fish? I'm not sure. I was fishing some tough stuff. I mean, they were I, the only way I could get them was to to go in there and really tick them off and and really bump that jig in the in the in the cover to get them to bite. And uh, I was getting the bites, and but unfortunately, some of them were in the slot, and I didn't get as many bites as yesterday. Um, but that's the way it goes sometimes. I had to put a couple back that really hurt, and um, I, I knew that uh, I just had to keep going. Uh, the, the reeds that I had fished the, the couple days before had uh, run out. About 9 o'clock, I just started going fishing new stuff and had some bites, but again, there, there weren't enough. And, uh, you know, to, to win a caliber tournament like this, you, you need two things. you got to perform flawlessly. You gotta I dropped a couple fish, which, which hurt. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know where to start, you guys. You guys are fantastic. You're... Well, let's start with video of you then. While you're thinking about it, we've got video of you on the lake out there, on Cross Lake, and tell us what you're doing out there. Right now I'm cranking. This is a uh, last stop. I probably got about 10 minutes left, and, and all of a sudden uh, this crankbait I borrowed from a guy named Brandon out in the boat yard last night. He gives me this crankbait and says, here, throw this. And I thought, okay. And that was enough to uh, give me enough confidence to keep throwing the crankbait and I, I'm telling you it was just the last couple of casts I was coming in my lip was dragging the ground I was all upset and uh, I cast out there and this hog just bit the bait it was great looks like it looks like you're having a trouble with him out there oh it, this that fish was just pulling my string something else it was taking drag oh it was incredible I was um, I was doing everything I could catch up to it it was well, I don't know. I'm speechless. <laughs> You're one of these Western anglers that's come out here, and you had some great success on day one. Kind of fell a little bit down off of that, but have you had a wonderful experience here at Cross Lake? Would you come back? Absolutely, I'd come back. Cross Lake is a great lake. I mean, it's it's got everything a fisherman could want. It's got the cover. It's got it's got the best fish. The slot is the thing that really makes a big difference for the anglers in the weights, and it changes them. Um, you know, I, I would have probably never found the fish and, and been in the position I, I, I'm in now without my friends and my family. And, and uh, man, this is, this is incredible. Marcus, thank you for taking me out. Bobby, thank you for staying with me. And Brandon, Brandon, thanks for the crankbait, Brandon. You, <laughs> you're the man. And thank you, Greg Gutierrez. Congratulations on a great run this week. <laughs> Greg Gutierrez is weighed out.
Many of you saw Eddie Waits getting uh, rather demonstrative about his uh, glee that uh, Greg was not able to pass him up on the leaderboard. Eddie is our leader. He's with Charlie Evans. You're in the lead right now. In the lead right now. We got one man over here, Ricky Smith, who's weighed in four. He's just a little bit behind you. How are the nerves right now? What nerves? I don't have any nerves anymore. They've been gone for three days. <laughs> nerves already shot. Let's look at you out there on cross leg. We've got video of you out there on the leg and find out what you're doing out there. Well, oh, I'm sorry. It didn't, didn't have video there. We don't need it anyway. I think you're good enough video right here. One man between you and $100,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, if he's got a fish, he, it, we'll see. Oh, we do have his video now. Now we are ready with video. Let's look at you right now out there on Cross Lake and tell us what you're doing. Well, I'm going to tell you what. I, I spent three weeks on this lake, had a lot of help from local help. L watched a lot of the local fit, the fish, guys practicing fish, and stuff fish, like that. Good fish. And all the new tackle and baits that we have out on the market today, even all the baits at Walmart and all the all over the place, and I have them. I got every bait that's ever been made, I think. But I went back to old baits that were made 30 and 40 yes, years yes, ago. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You're a little bit excited right there, it looks like. Yes, I was. Uh, I haven't caught but uh, four fish in this tournament, and two of them have been big ones. Those are the ones that made the difference so far. You're this close to $100,000, but we got Carlton over there with the one man that can beat him, Carlton. That's right. I'm with Ricky Smith. Now, Ricky, you have uh, BFL All-American tournament experience. You finished third in your last uh, event here at the All-American. You are one pound and one ounce away from first place. This has been quite a run for you here. It's been a wonderful week. Win, lose, or draw, we're all winners. Uh, I have no complaints. I'm just I'm thrilled to death. And uh, this, is, this is certainly a thrill for me to be part of this. Okay, well, you have weighed in four fish. You can possibly bring up the fifth fish here for one pound and one ounce and the BFL All-American Championship. Let's see what we've got in that Ranger Live well. Doesn't have oh, any. No. We have a champion here. <laughs> Eddie Waits. <laughs> Congratulations to Eddie Waits the third, your 2002 BFL All-American Champion. You have seen the best in fishing once again, right here live on FLW Outdoors. This has been the exciting weigh-in of the BFL All-American. Don't forget to log on to FLWOutdoors.com for the latest information on the BFL, the Everstart, the RCL Walleye, and of course, the FLW Tour. When we join you next week at this same time, 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Central, we'll recap all the exciting action from the All-American and preview the FLW Tour stop on Lake Champlain coming up in just two weeks. Thanks for watching, everybody.